Hey guys, what's happening? Dustin checking in, Hike Brothers Outdoors. Uh, Bob and I just got back from fishing a tournament out in Lake Francis Case, South Dakota. So wanted to throw a quick fishing report out there while the information's still fresh. Uh, if you guys are, are like me, you know, when you're heading on these trips, we're sometimes driving six, seven hours to, to some different spots. And it's really tough to find good information before you head out there. So that's why we try to put out these fishing reports I know I'm always looking for that info and sometimes it's hard to find or not even in existence. So if you guys want us to keep the reports coming, make sure you hit subscribe and feel free to comment. Let us know if uh, anything we had to say helped you while you were out there or, or let us know anything you want to add to it. If something else was working, we'd love to hear about it. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and throw a comment out there. Share our videos if you know anybody heading out that way. But uh, on to the fishing report here. Uh, so the tournament we fished, we were uh, right around 14th, I think we finished out of 100 boats. So a decent finish, not, not too bad, but uh, fishing was tough, so we were, we were happy to bring in a limit. Uh, conditions were, were a little different than what I'm used to. The water was about 6 feet or so higher, I'd say, than it was this time last year. Uh, the clarity was about like fishing in chocolate milk if you went anywhere north of Snake Creek. Uh, the further south you headed, the more clear the water got. Seemed like the east side was a little clearer, seeing water temps from about 47 up to about 53, 54 in some of the bays. So um, I would say the fish are probably 98% done with the spawn. We caught some males that were still milking a little bit, but uh, what we did to find fish is fish a lot of the main lake points right out of Snake Creek. Uh, both sides, uh, Platte Creek, that area was real, real good for us too. Um, what we were doing is starting off shallower in the morning and in the evening in the low light periods, somewhere in that 6 to 12 to maybe even 16 foot range. We, we were pitching jigs in the morning, uh, like a fireball stand up jig with a large shiner or, or big fat head, whatever you can get, the bigger the bait, the better it seemed in the morning. Uh, and then the, as the day rolled on, we were moving off of those main lake points and starting to push out a little deeper in that 22 to 28 foot range. It's 25 kind of seeming to be the, the ticket for us. And we were dragging big fireball jigs, the standard style fireball short shank um, with fat heads and Literally, we're just bumping along with the trolling motor in that like 0.5 to 0.9 range and just bouncing that jig off the bottom, lifting it up a foot. Keeping contact with that bottom is huge because those fish are sitting right on the bottom right now. So if you weren't staying down on the bottom, you need to upsize your jig or whatever you got to do to make sure you're, you're keeping contact with that bottom and lifting it up. With that murkier water, it's harder for the fish to see. And when you're hitting that bottom, you're stirring up a little bit of sediment, making a little bit of vibration. And that seemed to turn those fish on a little bit for us. Uh, we were getting some tail bites, so throwing a stinger hook off that back eyelet on the fireball is helpful sometimes if you're having a problem with that. Otherwise, for the most part, I would follow the fish back to the water with the rod tip when I'd get a tap. And then as we trolled on, the line would tighten up and I'd just kind of slowly start working that back. And if you feel that fish on there, don't be afraid to set the hook. Minnows are cheap. Uh, losing fish sucks. So uh, another thing that seemed to help too is feeding them a little bit of line. You know, if you got a little tap, tap right away, click that bail open or else keep it open with your finger on the line. And if you get a hit, feed them a little bit of line, a few feet at least. Give them a couple of seconds to suck that bait down because they were pretty finicky. But uh, did talk to some of the guys out pulling lead core. Uh, a lot of short fish coming in that way, but then a lot of nice fish coming in that way too. It just kind of seemed that those 17 to 20 inch fish were kind of mi missing for those guys out pulling lead core. But they brought in some really nice bigger keepers, you know, 26 inches uh, for, for your over fish. But uh, yeah, they were from what I understand, pulling anywhere from about 25 out to about 35 feet of water. Uh, flicker shad seemed to be what I heard was working the best, so um, I don't want to tell you for sure because we didn't pull any lead. We were live bait fishing, but uh, that's worth a shot too. So anyway, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Like I said, hope you enjoy the fishing reports. 
Uh, Bob's going to throw out a pre-fishing video and kind of talk about some of our tactics and techniques for, for breaking down a lake and what we do when plan A and plan B aren't working for us. And then uh, another week and a half here, we've got the Cabela's Masters Walleye Circuit event on Lake McConaughey in Nebraska. So we'll be doing a fishing report from there. Uh, wish us luck. Tight lines. Happy hunting, guys. Thanks for watching.